Alright, what's going on YouTube? It's X Landscape here back with another video for you guys. This is a video of my uh, MEP 802A military generator. Um, let's do a quick walk around for you. If you guys know about these generators, you know I don't really need to explain everything about it. But I'm having a problem with uh, a couple of the gauges that they're not correctly working. We got a little spider here. Let's get rid of him. Get out of my generator. Alright, he's free. Alright, so my fuel gauge is not working correctly. And my water temp is not working correctly. So, I'm not going to go through the whole process to how to test them. To test the sending unit and test the, um, uh, test the actual gauges. Because I did that already as per the technical manual. And it turns out that both these gauges are... No good. So, what are the odds of that that they both burnt out at the same time? I have no idea. But, uh, they did. So, I tested them out and fuel gauge is no good. Water gauge is no good. Um, so, I ordered the, both of them, both new gauges. I got a video gauge for this one and I got an RS something. I'll give you the model number later for the, uh, for the water. So the fuel one came in the mail, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change that. All right, so here's the replacement gauge. It is uh, from VDO. I bought it from Summit because I couldn't find it anywhere else. It was a little expensive with the shipping. Uh, here's the model number that works. It's uh, 301-904. Uh, a lot of information on Steel Soldiers. If you guys aren't on Steel Soldiers, I suggest you highly highly recommended. There's a lot of Great guys with a lot of knowledge on that on that forum that will um, kind of point you in the right direction and uh, get you going on working on these. Because I mean, as you can see, there's there's a lot going on. It's kind of a complex generator. There's a lot of wires, a lot of different circuitry, and if you download the technical manuals, it pretty much tells you step by step on how to diagnose everything. And it's it's really it's intimidating at first, but once you go you know line by line and you can figure it out, it's it's really a dummy can do it so it's you know army proof so these guys and not to call the army guys dummies but there's some uh, there's some real winners that uh that work on some of these machines and any machine in in general um that really have no idea and it's just following the instructions like baking a cake you know put this terminal to that terminal and you get xyz voltage so it's pretty straightforward so I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you guys through uh, the installation of um, at least the fuel gauge for now until I get the uh, the water gauge. That should be coming uh, hopefully by next week. So, All right, so we'll get rocking and rolling on it. It's pretty straightforward, just a couple uh, couple screws and uh, nuts that you got to undo, and, uh, and uh, that's it. So, all right, we'll, uh, we'll get started. There's an update with these gauges. <clears throat> a lot of times what will happen is, um, from what I understand, if you squish these down too hard, it'll either break the gauge or short it out. There used to be black gauge, a black, um, like little bushings on there. This is the updated one, which is the white rubber looking bushings. So... If yours isn't updated and your gauge isn't working, check this out first. You might be able to back that off and uh, a lot of times they'll supposedly start working again. So, alright, we'll keep continuing on on this. Alright, so the camera didn't record, but it's pretty straightforward. Your old gauge here, there's going to be a couple uh, letters. Uh, let's see if you guys can see that. There's an S, an I... 
and a G. Those are the only three real terminals you're going to be worried about. And it even says it on here. The S, you, you, that's your signal wire. The I, I'm assuming, is positive, And the G is going to be your ground. So just match it up to the three. Put your standoffs on there. Boom, boom. Gauge is on. Let us see. Right now it's reading empty. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Let's see if it works. And there we have it. It's going. Perfect. That's about right. I think I have about about three quarters fuel in there now anyway, so it's pretty good. Alright, so that problem's fixed. And I'll do another update. I'll do another video when we get the, um, the new water temp gauge. So uh, I'm going to tighten all these uh, screws back down, make sure they're 100% complete. Tighten everything down, then we'll do a uh, startup. All right, so as I was buttoning this thing up, I told you guys I didn't have this gauge. It didn't come in the mail yet. Well, as I was just about to finish up, package. So we'll go ahead and open this and uh, get this installed too. Perfect. Perfect timing. All right, so here's the water temperature gauge. The part number is, it's a um, ISS Pro R8750. I'm a little upset that it has the chrome ring, but uh, I got a can of plastic dips kicking around somewhere. So once I get this on, I'll just, you know, uh, plastic dip that so it matches. It looks a little bit better. So, uh, all right, I'll uh, get this thing all unboxed here and <clears throat> get this installed. All right. This I got off uh, eBay. I actually got a, <laughs> got a really good deal. So I'm a little, uh, a little excited about this one. I mean, it's old as can be, but hey. It works, right? Old new stock. Cool. All right, so uh, I'll get this other one, take it off, and we'll get this one put on. All right. So basically all I did was uh, I just swapped these wires. Same thing as the other gauge here. I put uh, S to S, that's your signal wire, G is ground, and I is, uh, I believe, positive. So that's exactly what I did. Obviously, this, the gauge isn't going to read right away because the machine is cold. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and start it up, warm it up, get it up to operating temperature, and uh, see if we have gauge that works. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the machine. If you guys never started one of these things before, which I'm, if you're watching this, I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. Right there, dead crank, off, and normal. I'm going to switch that down to normal. Go ahead and shut the, shut the door. Come back to our... We don't need any preheat, but... Prime and run. You guys can hear the fuel pump kicking on, doing its thing. Fuel gauge is now working. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. run for a couple minutes and see if that uh, water temperature gauge comes up. Alright, so our gauge is starting to move. We'll let it warm up a little bit more. 
going to get up to operating temperature. Should reach about 180 or so, and then uh, we'll go ahead and put a load on it and see what happens. So all is well so far. So we should be all warmed up. I got a couple heaters and hair dryers plugged in. Let's go ahead and uh, throw the breaker. It's running pretty good. Temperature gauge and water gauge are looking pretty good. Everything seems to be working. We're at a little over 100% load. Got a little bit of light smoke coming out the exhaust. Very light. I mean, she's working. It's definitely working. So these gauges seem to work, so. All right, I guess I'll uh, open up the circuit and start its cool down and put all this stuff away. And let it cool down for like five minutes or so. All right, so that was a nice little run for it. It was about, uh, that's about an hour and a half at anywhere from 80 to 110% load. Fuel gauge works good. Water temperature gauge works pretty good. Everything else is, is pretty good on it. Fuel gauge is actually still going down. So, all right. All right, so uh, I guess that's going to end, end the video. If you guys got any questions, uh, leave it down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to uh, see more content like this. All right, talk to you guys soon. Hope you guys have a great day.